I did drift away from the, the hip hop stuff. Really, it's funny because um, I ended up doing a lot of rock and a lot of experimental rock. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> initially, really, it was avant-garde and hip hop. And it was funny how those two things made sense to me. Um, rock seemed incredibly conservative to me. You know, even when I heard, when I heard Sonic Youth, and they came to me, I, I thought they were pretty conservative in a weird way. I mean, compared to like, like she, the sheer noise of, avant, of like a lot of the no wave avant-garde stuff that was happening. But how come you, you were, well, well you, you, you were drawn to that rock and, 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 and how come? Well, uh, well I, there's, a, there's an attitude I've, I've had my whole life about, about stuff is, is I, I generally combine a lot of focused directions. Like, you know what? I think this makes sense for me to do. And then I take a lot of chances. You know, like I just, sure, why not? If it sort of seems like maybe it's kind of okay and the risk, uh, you know, I, I, I balance that versus risk of being in something I, I'm not going to like or something. So I, I've got to say that Sonic Youth did not immediately grab me as like, oh my God, this is like vital music. I thought they were really nice people. I thought they were coming from the right place. I liked that I would see them in all these, in all these weird places because they, 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 they sort of were like, following the whole hip hop thing a little bit. So I would see them at like weird little, you know, um, gallery openings for graffiti artists, that sort of thing. I'd see Thurston there or something. And I, I don't think I saw him at the Roxy, but uh, everyone was kind of going around those things. So I knew they were kind of in that scene a little bit. So here's a very important thing with me is I felt that then we'd, we would speak a common language. Yeah. So, um, you know, anytime that there's good communication, Uh, um, I feel I'm more available to do, doing something creative because, I mean, that says it right there, right? If it's good communication. And I think that they, we, we came from some of the same places. There's, there's things I did not like about Sonic Youth, really, but... Um, What? Well, I didn't like, at the time, I didn't like their sort of garagey, um, almost rootsy kind of quality. Like, it's funny because people... Um, uh, I sort of... Also, I had, I had no experience with that kind of that kind of rock, and they sounded a little. Well, now I say rootsy, but at the time I even kind of joked with us, I, and I I said that they sounded a little country, and it's funny because after I worked with them, I realized that they they it's funny when they actually titled the record after a Creedence Clearwater um, record or whatever you know Bad Moon Rising or Creedence, Creedence Clearwater song. I was like, oh, see, it's country music. Like literally, I was. It seemed very rootsy to me, very Americana, and at the time, that didn't really um, grab me. But it's funny because I, my, my, basically, I softened a little bit because I, I think I went in this thing which was very reactionary, where I was like, you know, very, very avant-garde, like just pure noise, and I also liked, you know, the, the hip hop stuff because it's actually the hip hop stuff, hands down, and everyone will tell you. If you had Thurston here, he would tell you the same thing that seemed like actually the most progressive stuff happening around. And everyone knew it. That was the, the, that was the most street, you know, that had more of the most, more street kind of thing. And um, it was, it was the, the, the newest, the most original sounding kind of thing. And um, everyone knew it. Yeah, but it's strange because when I, when I look at, at all the albums that you, that you pro pro produced or co-produced, um, I wrote down, you also uh, produced Africa Bambata. It seemed like a strange, strange name, well, within all those rock artists, rock, I mean, ex experimental rock stuff that you did. So it's, well, it's a bit funny because you, you say you're really into, into noise and into, into, well, into hip hop, but you, the, the albums that you produced are more, more mainstream than you actually maybe were, were self-interested in. Oh, so you're you're saying Africa Bambada is a little less like straight hip hop? You're saying no, no, no. You were saying you you are really you were back then. You're really into hip hop. Initially, and initially, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, well, then then you started producing at the end of the 70s until well now. Um, and if I look at the list of all the albums that you of songs or artists that you've worked with, um, there are not many hip hop artists. No, well, first of all, a lot of them weren't big. You know, a, a lot of the hip-hop stuff I did didn't really um, go anywhere. I mean, Africa Bombada kind of did. Africa Bombada was already, because he had done 
a, a record called Planet Rock with Arthur Baker. He was already kind of known a little bit, you know, like on a, on, he had a, basically he had a club hit at that time. So he'd already started going. Um, he was the one person that I guess was kind of known. A lot of the other people like DST wasn't really, as an artist, he's not well known. I mean, he's well known as a DJ and as a turntablist because of, basically because of that one song, Rocket. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, in all honesty, it, they're not, a lot of the hip hop stuff isn't listed there because, oh, okay. Well, well, okay, for instance, I, I, I worked on a um, Fab Five Freddy record. Maybe you know of that guy. Yeah. He was the guy that, you know. No, okay, because I was in. So for instance, that's, that's missing. Oh, okay, that, okay, because when I, when I, <laughs> you know, yeah, because you were saying, well, I, I, uh, I grew up liking noise and liking hip hop, um, but I thought, well, you're producing years. Um, well, it seemed like you drifted away from the music that you really liked. Well, I did drift. Away. That is true, though. I did drift away from the, the hip hop stuff. Yeah. Um, but there was maybe two years where it was pretty intensive. And like I said, most of it you haven't heard of. So that's why it's not on the list. Oh, okay. I, I, I left off Fab Five Freddy. Maybe I should put it on there.